of the shift gears. Um, talk about how Tuesday was from your everybody's standpoint. Obviously, an emotional day for everybody. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, it was a tough week for us. You know, we, we kind of knew it was coming right for the last couple months, but it's it's another thing to finally hear it and you know just see the the impact on you know people's lives and you know people that are close to me. You know, there's a lot of guys on the 14 car that. I've been there for 15 plus years, so you know, just the reality kind of setting into for them that I'm not going to go to work here anymore at the end of the year. So, yeah, it's just a tough situation. I mean, truthfully, from you know day one, it's, just, it's not going to be easy for all these people. You know, trying to find a, a spot to land. You know, hopefully they can all find a spot. I mean, they're they're just incredible men and women over there. So they deserve to be in the sport. They deserve to find a, a great home, and you know, hopefully they can find them. How sure. difficult is it to avoid that becoming a distraction for you or your people the rest of the way? Um, honestly, I don't think it's <clears throat> much different. Than, I mean, it is different, right? Like now that you know it's in, in the public eye and now that we know that's happening. But, I mean, for the last two or three months, like we've been trying to keep people's head in the game just because they've been kind of hearing it. But when it does come out, I mean, it's going to be hard, I think, especially coming the end of the year. I mean, we were talking just the other day, like, it might really be hard for us to see kick cars to the racetrack. You know, if people are leaving and, you know, it's not like you're going to get somebody to start coming to work there, even on a short-term basis. I mean, once people leave, there's nobody coming back. So, you know, we already do it on way less people than the other four-car teams. So, it is kind of scary just knowing the position that we're in right now, you know, being right there on the cut line and knowing that, you know, all of our employees essentially are taking job interviews at other places and if those people want them to start, you know, there's nothing saying that they can't just go start working there. So it's going to be difficult, you know, I think as a company, you know, I do think the 14 guys are pretty committed to, to sticking it out. And, um, you know, they had a lot of other offers over the off season and, and we just feel like we have kind of something special amongst the camaraderie and things. So I don't know if I have to worry as much about our group, but from a company standpoint, it's certainly going to be hard for sure. Has it been? Obviously, TUC was an emotional day. Um, talk about that from your standpoint, because I know obviously a lot of people, I know Chase said earlier, y'all have got guys who've been there for 50 or so years and helped walk through that. Yeah, I mean, Tuesday was was a tough day for, for all of us, right? I mean, you know, from the drivers to every, you know, um, man and woman that works in the shop, right? I mean, it, it, it was, you know, most definitely a tough day, but, you know, you know, Tony met with met with us, and then the crew chiefs, and then obviously the whole company. And honestly, you know, given the circumstance, I think you know he handled it um, as good as he could have. And yeah, I mean, we're just gonna, you know, we're gonna race hard the rest of the season and see what happens. What, how would you describe the mood today? Um, not really any different than it's been the last couple weeks. Um, I mean, we all knew something was happening, right? We just didn't know exactly what. So, I mean, I don't think the mood really changed. If anything, maybe people are kind of relieved to finally know instead of just be guessing. Um, so, I don't really think anything that I can tell has changed on my end. Ron, you said yesterday that he hopes that he can stay with you next year, wherever that is. How, how important is it if it's possible to stay together? Yeah, I mean, that's without a, without a doubt um, the number one focus on, on my – mind right now is, is to, to find a way to keep racing with Rodney in this entire four group, right? Because I think we've been, um, given everything we've been dealing with, right, we've been progressing and getting better week in and week out. Um, I think that, you know, that's the culture that Rodney's created there is, is second to none. And um, I feel like I fit in fit into that. And we, we all, I feel like we all mutually feel the same way, right? We want to keep racing together, keep building together. Um, people forget with everything going on that I'm still a rookie, you know, and, and going to some of these places for you know, the first time in a cup car. So um, they've done a great job. And, you know, regardless, the leadership Rodney's shown throughout this whole process, um, you know, from the start of the year to, to even now, going through what we did this week, it was second, second to none. And, you know, I obviously want to keep racing. How much of a distraction, though, does it make it for the rest of the year? Like you said, you are still a rookie going to these places for the first time. Well, I mean, it's, I mean, it's not ideal, right? I mean, you don't want to have to be looking for, you know, you have a whole company of two, 300 people looking for jobs right now or trying to work through that, right? And, and so, I mean, it's not ideal, right? I mean, there's without a doubt. But, you know, I think that, I think back to some advice Dale Jr. gave me about a year, over a year ago, right? And I think it was going through the, you know, the whole process of, 
you know, maybe it was around the time that I drove the nine car and everything was going on, and I was like, man, I, I'm so tired of racing for my life every lap, every practice, every qualifying session, and he said, that's when you're at your best. So that's what we, uh, we plan on doing the rest of the year. Do you get any sense of whether you'll be able to keep some of those people together? Um, I think time, time, will, time will tell, right? I think we, but the most um, you know, positive thing is that I think everybody's on the same page. We know that uh, that's what we want to do, and we're going to be patient and see what opportunities come our way and try to try to make that move together the best we can and, and and navigate through the rest of the season as well, right? And we know that there's going to be you know there's going to be good days and bad days, and I'm still rookie and still learning. And but you know I think we've already shown the potential that that we can run well. You know we're coming off several good weeks and um, you know coming here I knew this was tough. I really haven't raced here. I mean. I ran one truck race years ago, no practice, no qualifying. So you know, this is this is my first time here, and um, I knew that th this week would be a little bit more of a challenge than most. How do you feel about it so far? I don't know. I don't really feel great. Um, none of our cars really seem like they have that much speed. We're all kind of not really sure what we have. Um, you know, I think it's just we're just gonna have to grind it out Sunday and get the best finish we can. Josh, I'm sure the weekly objective stays the same, but. Um, from a, a mindset approach, do, do things change for you a bit going forward, a kind of like an auditioning mindset? Or? I mean, I mean, from as far as I can remember, I've had to race for a job, right? My, my dad doesn't pay for me to race. Like, I've had to work for every opportunity I've got. Um, I've been thankful to have some amazing people in my life that have supported me and gave me opportunities to, to race. So, from my side of things, nothing's really going to change, right? I, I mean, I'm going to keep racing hard and fighting and doing everything I can to stay racing at this level. I have a great team behind me that is 100% behind me and wants to stay racing with me. So we're going to, like I said, we're going to you know, race our hearts out the rest of the year. And, um, you know, from my side, I don't feel like that you know, anything's, nothing's really ever came that easy for me. So, I'm, you know, when I got this opportunity, I almost felt like it was too good to be true. And, and here we are less than a year later dealing with all this. But... We're not going to quit. We're going to keep digging. First of all, you know, we challenging week for our organization, um, but you know, the, the goal still stands. I brought our team together. So, hey, you know, one, don't don't burn a bridge. You know, don't don't say something out of spite or whatnot. Just get frustrated. Um, today it's going to be a challenge today. I know how much you, this place means to all you guys. So um, that and, and the, the goal is still continue. Let's work hard, and, and the harder we work, the, the better opportunity we have to build our stock as, as a team and, and have an opportunity in the future. You know, so we got to put the blinders on and keep on focused on this weekend at Gateway, next weekend at Sonoma, and, and just keep the focus there because we can get caught up and wrapped up and. You know, drama and different stuff, but we put the blinders on, we're going to hopefully have an opportunity at the end of the day, and, and that's what we're all looking for. This is such a great opportunity for you, having come over there, and you've worked so well with Drew. Is it a little bit heartbreaking to know that after you've kind of reinvented yourself, gotten a second chance here with SHR, that you're going to have to start over again in 2025? Oh, it's, it's definitely challenging. It, it definitely probably throws a wrench into what we thought in, in January. But, you know, I've, I've been through my fair share of adversity and challenges in life. And with that being said, it's, it's just another step in the process. I, I'm, I told Tony, you know, I'm, I'm extremely grateful and thankful for you taking a, a chance on me and, and, and giving me an opportunity to to reinvent myself, reprove myself, and if it weren't for you, I wouldn't be in this position you know, looking for opportunities. So, um, I wouldn't say there's much bitterness for me, personally. I'm extremely grateful that Stuart Haas he gave me an opportunity to, to go out there and do my film. So, uh, we are looking for an opportunity to go out and, and win races in the Cup Series next year. And, um, where that home will be, I'm not sure yet. All I know I can do is, is stick to the fundamentals of things, keep focusing on, on what I can control, and that's myself, my emotions, my race team, 
and, and going out there and trying to compete every single week. I know you've got killers out, but it sounds like maybe three different manufacturers. Do they feel confident that you'll have something strong to come back to? You never know in this business. Um, I know this time is really important to run good, um, but I got to remind myself, hey, don't don't overdo it. Either. Trying too hard to run good, and you know, I don't know really what to think right now. It's all kind of super new. I got great people around me, um, whether it be on the racetrack and off the racetrack. You know, our team in the garage, my team away from the garage. There's a lot of great people that, that got my back, and so definitely looking for an opportunity to go out there and, and you know, be a piece of the puzzle for an organization and, and help grow it and, and build it to become better. Appreciate your time, now. Was was this expected? I mean, did you did you have in your head that this was going to happen uh, based on on previous media reports, that sort of thing? I mean, you see all the rumors and you kind of hear different rumors and whatnot, so. If they just came out cold turkey and we didn't hear anything about it, it'd be like, whoa, but kind of saw it coming a little bit, so it didn't hit us as hard. But when you hear those words from Tony, it's a little different than seeing it on, on social media, the rumors. So it definitely was challenging when he said, hey, you know, the rumors aren't aren't all false. Like, they're it's true. We're going to be shutting down Stuart Haas. It's like, man, like, it just feels different when he says that. So. Um, when, it, when it becomes reality. Yeah, when it's a reality, but, you know, I, I just keep on preaching to our guys and our group. Is we can only control what we can control. We can't worry about and focus on the stuff we can't control. We've got to go out there. We have an opportunity this weekend. And we're not even halfway through the season yet, right? So we have a lot of more races and weekends to enjoy together and, and you know, try and become a, a race team that – as championship level. Terrific. Thanks, Noah. Thank Appreciate you. it. Noah, how do you balance? Kevin Nix with FrontStretch.com. Come back soon for more great racing videos. And if you like us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.